right, so let's uh, round up the show. Let's, let's do some UFC 298 previews, thoughts, picks, and stuff like that. Um, we're not going to do all the fights. You know, the, the, you know, this, this, we're just going to cover the top four fights. And the first one I wanted to talk about is Ian Gary, uh, another interesting step up in competition against Jeff Neal. At this point, Ian's a, a pretty sizable favorite in this one, coming off a big win recently uh, against his Neil Magny. Um, like, Dean, what are your thoughts on this fight? Is from what you've seen – is Ian Gary for real? Is this the guy that can become the next big star out of Ireland? Uh, how do you like his chances against Jeff Neal? Or is Jeff Neal like a seriously live underdog people are underestimating? He's a seriously live underdog. But at the end of the day, you, you have to root for Ian Gary because his ceiling is higher. His potential to be around MMA for a long time and give us more is higher than Jeff Neal. Jeff Neal should win that fight, in my opinion. Jeff Neal, if if these guys train in a room every day with nobody watching and just show up and Jeff Neal will probably and Jeff Neal was hungry enough, Jeff Neal will probably beat him up. But that's not what the fight game is about. The fight game is about everything. It's about doing media, being on, showing up, fight night, performing, making weight. It's all that. And despite everything that's going on in Ian Gary's life right now, Ian Gary is a true professional and he does all the stuff that MMA requires of a star. So he deserves to win in that respect that because he's going to be around in five years, still giving us great performances. Jeff Neal's a guy who tremendously dangerous, probably one of the hardest hitters in the welterweight division but he's inconsistent. And sometimes you could tell he doesn't want to be there. Sometimes he just, he doesn't show up. He so, he starts slow. He doesn't make weight sometimes. And, and it's a little disheartening, but that's just the type of fighter he is. And I think the UFC recognizes that. And if there's any doubt in his head that he can lose against Ian Gary, Ian Gary's going to beat him. But if he comes in hungry, it's a good thing. They've taken some time off. You haven't seen safe Saud in the corner in the last couple of months, he said he took he told us guys we taking some time off. We gonna get this. We gonna get back together. We gonna get this 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 ship rolling again. So he had his guys in the gym, not fighting every weekend, in the gym working on their mistakes, getting better. So hopefully he was able to get through to Jeff Neal, and Jeff Neal can give us uh, a little bit more of Jeff Neal than what he has in the past. Anthony, how do you see this fight going? Man, I'm I'm leaning toward Gary, but, but I think the the deciding factor is going to be the level of aggression he shows. If he can keep Neil on the back foot, that's his path to victory. Um, and and I, and Gary has done a very good job of keeping everybody on on the back foot. He's going to have to worry about the power, but I think I, Gary is not necessarily the 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 easiest guy to hit. So I, I think the the level of risk for him lowers a lot with him being the aggressor um, and, and slipping those shots and trying to land those, those like really quick, like not even turning your hip leg kicks, hit, hitting those, hitting those, uh, those calves. And I think, I think Neil's going to have a rough night. Um, however, if Neil, if Neil comes in with a particular level of, of confidence and bravado that can, that can throw a monkey wrench in, in that idea. I just don't see that happening. I think Gary is too skilled. I think he's too confident. It's it's going to be his night, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I think it's going to be um, Gary. But I think it's going to be a really hard fight. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people are going to look at the MMA match and say, oh, well, you know, he, Jeff Neal lost to Magny, Ian B. Magny. It, it, I, it's just apples to oranges, just, just different kinds of fighters. But I, I really think I'm surprised the, the betting odds is this high. I mean, this is a guy that's beaten Vicente Luque, San, uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio, these are big, like, proven good fighters in the UFC. So I, I, if, if Jeff beat him, I would not be surprised at all. Wouldn't be shocked. Um, you know, I still have my questions about Ian Gary, but yeah, I, I think even Gary's going to to pull this one out, uh, get a, a, a hard close foot win. But moving on from there, um, another big fight, Robert Whitaker versus Paul Costa. A fascinating matchup, fascinating clash of different strikers, uh, a huge fight within the division. Uh, a lot of people looking forward to this. Uh, Dean, how do you see this? Is, is Are we at a point? This is fascinating because Paul Acosta seemed like he was going to be the guy and just can't stay healthy, 
can't fight, just inconsistent. But Robert Whitaker, and going back to your point earlier, you hit a certain point in age, you just it, you're not the same fighter anymore. It's just hard to maintain that. And Robert Whitaker seems to be kind of near in that, especially after that loss, that shocking loss, DDP. Like, is this kind of the the brain says, oh, Robert Whitaker should win. He's one of the greatest of all time, especially middleweight. But is this kind of one of those things where it's just another part of a, an age maybe based decline for Robert Whitaker? I don't think so. I think this is I think this is actually a good fight for for Robert Whitaker. You know, I've spoken to him and I like the way he trains. He says he doesn't train to fight these guys. He trains to beat these guys. I think he might have made a mistake in the training for Drikas. Maybe there was something he didn't see or didn't cover in the, in the pre- preparation for that. But I think he's I think he's on his way with this fight. I, there's something about Paula Costa that I am not sold on. I'm just I'm just not sold on him, man. I, like you said, when he came out, he seemed like the next big thing. He seemed like he was going to be that guy. He was came out had fast hands. You was like, oh man, this guy. But he never seemed to get better. And that's what this fight game is about. It's about evolution between fights. And that was the one thing that made Kamar Usman so great was that Usman when he first started. He was on this trajectory that you knew he was going to be good because he kept getting better each time he fought. He always added an element to his game that made him more dangerous and made it harder for people to prepare for him. But I haven't seen that with Paulo Costa. In fact, it seems like it's easier to prepare for Paulo Costa now more than ever. You know, if Luke Rockhold did what he did to him, I mean, that was one of the funnest, sloppiest, worst fights I've ever seen. (laughs) But, But he just... To me, I'm just not sold on him. Uh, he had a great fight against Yo- Yoel Romero. But knowing how Yoel fights, Yoel doesn't really fight until the last minute of the last round. It makes sense why they had a good fight, because Yoel didn't fight him. So I'm just not sold on Paul Acosta. I, I just don't see a high upside for him. And this is his opportunity to make me put my foot in my mouth. And I like it when guys do. When guys hear me talk trash about him, I'm saying it because I want you to shut me up. I want to see a great performance. That's what I want. And when you're not giving it to me, I want, I'm questioning what you've been doing for the last six months. Like, if you're supposed to be training, show me. Anthony, what are your thoughts? I, I swear Dean just, like, put a TV screen connected to my brain and just read exactly what I was thinking <laughs> about this fight. I have ne- – and you, Jason, you know this because we've been, you know, partners and colleagues and stuff doing this together for a very long time now. I've been saying this ever since we first met. Um, Paulo Costa has never impressed me. I've never been sold on Paulo Costa. He is, he is always, his wins have always come at the right time against the right opponents. And by circumstance, he's been able to propel himself to the heights that he has and all credit to him for doing that. But against a guy like Robert Whitaker, that's just not good enough. If this version of Luke Rockhold took you to the brink of destruction, what do you think Robert Whitaker can do to you? What do you think one of the most skilled middleweights in history who granted he did just lose, but he lost against the current champion. What do you think that man is capable of doing to you? I, you know, Paulo Costa has always has that factor of just being strong and being a brute and, you know, underrated ground game. But we're also talking about a Robert Whitaker whose wrestling skills are perhaps the most underrated in the sport we're talking about one of the most skilled strikers who's who's got so much nuance to his kickboxing technique that that he could you know on his good day he could make um a, a facsimile of what Adesanya did to uh to Costa to to take that level of brute aggression against someone who's so skilled and, and so precise normally turns into a a very embarrassing night for the aggressor um, unless Costa is able to land some some sort of Thanos Infinity Gauntlet of a strike, it's just not happening. The I think Whitaker is going to have one of the easiest, most impressive nights of his career. I, I agree with both of you guys. I, I'm going to go with Whitaker myself, but I, I do have my concerns about Robert. I, I do feel while he's 33, he's a different type of 33. Ten decisions he's gone to in the UFC, fighting often at the highest level, some absolute war, some really tough fights. I do feel like on a level his his reflexes, they have slowed down just enough. I think P, fighters are getting better reads on him. He was a tougher matcher for a lot of people now that the, the scouting reports are out there on him a little bit. I think people are dealing with him better. Um, and, and I just think he's had enough damage put on him where he's, the longer he's in fights, especially with a power puncher like Paulo, that 
things can happen, just like the Drickus fight. I didn't think he Drickus looked better than him, but he, you know, it just you get hit with a big one, you know, and just it changes it. So I still think Robert's gonna win, but I do think there's a part of me that wonders he's kind of just that happens to great fighters all the time, been in a lot of wars, and then just a steep decline all of a sudden. He's gonna do everything to avoid it, but. I, the, the Robert Whitaker we all know I don't think is is going to be show up again. That said, if there's any time to prove the world wrong, this is it. Showing that I'm still the top guy. And and like you said, Dean, this is a really good matchup for him. So that could totally happen too. Moving on from that, co-main event. Marab Devolishvili versus Henry Cejudo. Henry Cejudo, former two-division champion, Olympic gold medals, is the underdog in this, which says a lot about how people are looking at Henry Cejudo. Also, just how underrated Marab was for so long. Finally, the word is out. This guy is a tough dude to handle, just a nightmare. One of the greatest cardios maybe in UFC history, up there with the best of the best, Diego's, the Diaz brothers, the Kane Velasquez. Insane cardio, and that's such a lethal weapon. Um, on a pure talent level, level Cejudo is better. Better striking, you would think better pedigree of wrestling, but again, that relentless style. Um, all of that said, does Marab get another big upset? Not upset, I mean, it's, it's still an upset to me, even though he's a favorite, but still a great pelt on the wall, Dean? Or, or does Henry Cejudo show, look, this that fight with Aljamain was very close, maybe a, a couple different things, he could have won that fight. He's still an elite. He shows there's level to this, and Marab isn't at that level. Henry Cejudo, they call him Triple C. Well, he calls himself Triple C, and he has every right in the world to do so. He was an Olympic gold medalist. That's something that 99.999% yeah. of wrestlers can't do. Yep. Then he goes off and becomes a UFC feather or flyweight champion, something that 99.99% of fighters can't do. Then he wins the Bantamweight belt. 99.999% of fighters. He's done things that w there's no one who has a more impressive combat sports career than that. Like, to win those type of, that level of achievement is absolutely crazy. And with that being said, he's not there no more. It's sad to say, but he's, he can't, he can't be there no more. Like, when he was doing those things, he was young, fresh, hungry. He had it. He had that eye. Now he's a tremendous uh, analyst. Uh, I, I watch his stuff. He breaks fights down really well. He understands the game probably as good as anybody in the world. But doing it and understanding it is a big difference, especially. And I'm telling you from experience. When I stopped fighting, I got better at fighting because I understood it better. And I think that's where Henry is now. So if I reverse engineer that mindset, he's better at fighting now because he can't do all the things that he used to do. So, and the fact that he can't do all the things that he used to do, that was win three <laughs> championships the way he did. I don't see him winning this fight. It sucks that he can't win this fight, but Marab is probably going to run through him. Wow. Anthony, you, <laughs> some bold things to follow. Yeah, I mean, the the one thing that I'm not going to agree with is I don't think Marab runs through him. But everything else sounds about right to me. I think Cejudo is still got enough athletic talent in him, along with the improved like fight IQ and just the the extra intellect that has gone into his coaching and 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 his analyst abilities. I think that's going to serve him well to keep him competitive. Um, but we're talking, Marab is, is a different sort of guy. Like we're not talking about, you know, just, just your rank and foul Bantamweight right here. This is a guy who should have been fighting for the title a couple of years ago. And, and only because of his friendship with Aljamain Sterling, it didn't happen. Um, so I think even, even that too, just knowing that, that, that prize is there for him. If he gets through Cejudo, I think we, we see an even more motivated and even more dangerous version of Marab. Um, so, yeah, I think Marab wins this. It's it's going to be tough in spots, I think, as the fight begins. Um, maybe have, maybe to the halfway mark, we'll see Cejudo do some intelligent things and shut certain certain parts of his game off. But youth and the, the hunger and the drive is, is going to take over in that latter half, and I think he gets the decision win. Can I add on to something here too? And 
I, I think part of the reason why I can't see Henry winning this fight is because I don't think his ground game is dangerous enough. I think he understands wrestling. He understands positioning. But I think a guy like even... It, I know on paper it looks like O'Malley would get destroyed by Marab, but I think O'Malley would actually do better against Marab than Henry right. just because O'Malley has a, a higher pedigree of jiu-jitsu in the sense of all fighting off of his back and his legs are longer and his submissions are probably a little bit more dangerous. And I just don't see that with Henry. I think Henry's going to have to try to out-wrestle Marab and, and technically he should be able to, like on paper, he should be able to, but it, from an MMA perspective, I just see it being really hard for him. Yeah, this, this is, I mean, this is a, a tough one for him to pick because it's just like you you laid out, D. Like, there's so many reasons Henry should be better and, and all the credentials and everything. And it's not like he's he's later in age, near his 40s, like still in like good athletic years. But yeah, the, the fire, the hunger's there. You're going in because the guy who's hungry. I think another a key element that has to play some level of role is, you know, Marab cl- being close friends with Al Jermaine. They, they've trained under the same style with. With Matt Serra, they they understand they have similar kind of things in those ways, and to know from Algerman, okay, this worked. This was able to. I tried this. You know what I mean? We've done this. I tried it. This didn't work. That did work. You know that little inside intel I think is so valuable in a fight like this because maybe he's not as technically skilled as as Algerman, but he has that information that's so great and helpful. Um, yeah, I'm probably gonna lean Marab too. Very hard fought decision. Another one that's a shame for Sahudo, but. It's a tough one. It, it's I'm super either way. Really looking forward to that fight. Now moving on, main event. Woof. Alexander Volkanovsky, a uh, small favorite over Ilya Tuporia. Tuporia really is one of the hidden gems. Finally getting some mainstream uh, notoriety now. He's in these big fights, but has been like a, a hidden gem in the in the game for a while now. Just as well rounded as it gets. A uh, kind of an, a. a, a another modern era kind of fighter just does everything super well not jumping off the, the page as one certain thing just really good fundamental everywhere um dean is, is this kind of is this now is this the usman versus woodley moment is this you know almost like hendrix versus gsp it's like alexander's been great and finally people are going to catch up with him just because the natural thing of a great fighter you get up in their age you've been there a long time in a fight maybe you lose a little bit of hunger is this where the alexander volkanovsky era finally ends where he's a champion that's done it all not much else to do and he's going to get just an absolutely hungry talented fighter i wish i was in his camp to see his mentality and see what's going on inside his camp because this question would be a lot easier if i seen him even at the even running around the PI, but I haven't seen him to yeah. know what things are, are like in his camp because it could very well be that. It could be, it could be a situation where we're looking at a guy who's, he's at the end of it, but I don't think so. Yeah. I think, I think he got caught. He got caught with his pants down against Islam, took that fight on 10 days notice, Yeah, wasn't sparring. So he was, you know, he, 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 got baited into a kick that he wasn't prepared for because he just wasn't used to looking at somebody in front of him and sparring for a couple weeks. So, but if he's, if he's done his homework, I think he finds some holes in Ilya. Now, Ilya looks like a guy with no holes. There's something about Ilya. And I asked him about this. It reminds me of Canelo Alvarez. It's, he's very Canelo Alvarez esque in terms of very efficient puncher goes to the body can knock you out just very clean and calm and composed and seems to always be in the right position. Now, with that being said, he's got to have a guy willing to stay in front of him. And I think that's the one thing that Volk is going to be good at. And that's just creating angles and creating spots for himself to get Ilya to, to make mistakes. He's got to get Ilya to make mistakes, but Volkanovsky has been so good about getting guys to make mistakes. So I think Volk wins this fight, and he still has about another year left. And then after that, he's going to go downhill. He will deteriorate. Yeah. Anthony? Well, this is the first time on this show today that I'm going to I'm going to dissent from from my man Dean here. Um, I think we have a new champion, um, and I would say things would be different if he if Volkanovski did not take that short notice fight uh, against Magachev. We're talking about a guy who just got knocked out cold, you know, a couple months back. 
um, you know, was coming off of a shoulder surgery, if, if I'm remembering correctly, rolled right into surgery rehab into a brutal knockout fight uh, against a guy who's much bigger, much heavier, um, and probably packs more of just pure power than Taporia, right? So he's, you know, he, he should be taking some time to let his brain heal, but he's going in there against uh, an absolute killer um, in, in Ilya. Also, but but what I do think is going to happen though, I don't think that that we're going to have this um, this performance like Tapori has had. We well, we haven't really seen him tested in the UFC. We've seen him just buzz through everybody that's fought, and, and he did that on the regional scene as well. He just just completely tore through everyone he he's, he's fought. But this time though, Volkanovski is going to give the blueprint on what Tapori's weaknesses are. On the way to Taporia getting crowned champion, he's going to get drugged through the ringer a little bit, and the rest of the division will see how they can crack the code of Ilya Taporia. Still gets the belt, though. Ah, but there's something that you said that's not 100% accurate. He has yeah. been tested, Ooh. and he passed that test with flying colors. He passed it better than I've seen anybody ever pass a test before. When Jai Herbert, Jai Herbert okay. kicked him in the head, dropped him, and he comes back and That's still right. knocks him out. And that was upper weight class. That That's was true. passing a pretty good test to me. That's right. So, That's right. I but, forgot about that when you're right. Yeah, but I, but I, I'm still sticking to my guns. To me, this this reminds me of a, a Floyd Mayweather Canelo Alvarez fight, where just one guy is just the other version of the other guy a few years after. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to go I'm gonna go with Anthony on this one. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just, it just feels like that changing of the guard mode. We've seen it with so many legendary fighters that you just hit a point where you just dominate for so long. And I think there's just those little things that change in life. Maybe you get a loss. Maybe a goal is taken off. You, you can't do much more at featherweight. Like even the best of the best, the hunger just leaves. Like he's done everything he can at featherweight. He went, tried to live out the stream again, beat a two division champion, failed both times. Like I, like the fact that he's fighting four months later, like Andy said, Anthony said about the, you know, after a knockout, I think that's very interesting. I don't think that benefits him. Like, I wonder what his, his, his goal his like his, his desires is in this fight is. And, and then you know that like, what's, what's he doing at camp? I'm curious too. Is he, is he pumped? Is he fired up? Is he ready to prove everybody wrong? Is he just doing this for the payday? Is the UFC forced him into it? Like, like it just, it doesn't feel great. And I just have so much respect for Ilya's talents. I think he's such a good fighter. I just think he's, he mirrors so many other fighters on the rise up that they are just too talented to deny. And I, I do feel he, he gets a win. I think he gets a stoppage. I'm going to say third round. Do you get, like Dean, how do you think uh, Volk wins the decision? And how do you think that he ends the fight? Yeah, I think Volk wins a decision. Vol I think Volk wins a decision. I think Ilya is too tough and, He's going to put up a really good fight. I think he's going to really show his best work, but just going to be outcrafted by a craftier guy. <laughs> Anthony, how does Ilya win? Uh, I think by decision. Um, but I'm, you know, I'm really hoping that Volk wins just because Tapori has been talking a lot of foolishness about not defending the belt yes. in the division. And I'm tired yes. of that. I want <laughs> champions to stay fighting in their weight class. Just, just give us, can we get yes. three defenses before we start talking about Anything else? Hold on, wait a minute. Class. He has been saying that. He's like, I'm not giving none. What does he expect to do with the belt then? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, he's going to pull a Jermaine Miranda or something. I don't know what, <laughs> like what what his intent is. I just don't want to see that happen. Hey, this is what you guys wanted, man. I mean, and I'm not saying it's, it's a Me? bad thing, but this is what this is what we wanted <laughs> when we said, yo, fighters need more power. This is what we wanted. You give, you give these guys yeah. power, man. They they don't know how to act. They they gotta play. They gotta play fair, man. They gotta play fair. We give them some power to play fair. Still good for yeah. some fights. 